Nomad Podcast. I am your host, and I have already said my name is Kim, and I'm gonna stop the video just to see if you can hear me. think you could hear me very well so I have on the earbuds to act as my microphone so as I was saying my name is Kim and I'm your host the crafty nomad podcast is my show and um, I'm happy to be back so uh, you guys have uh, been hanging out with me in different ways over the last couple weeks but uh, we had a very uh, successful uh, live show, Chris and I, Chris from Crochet Creations by Christy, whose channel I will link below. We had a live a little more than a week ago, and it was a fantastic time. So glad you guys uh, popped in and joined us. We had a blast. Um, but today I would like to come back uh, and show you some of the things that I have been working on during this uh, little lockdown and uh yeah so let's get to it but first i want to welcome all my new subscribers i'm definitely seeing an uptick in subscribership and i'm so excited for that i think uh just a couple different things are helping me out um and i am excited for that so thank you for uh joining me on this journey um so excited to have you. I want to say welcome back to everybody who have been here, who has been a ride or die from the moment you subscribed, you pop in whenever you see me upload something, and I am grateful for that. Uh, thank you for commenting, liking, and subscribing, and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. Uh, you can find me on Ravelry as Pettis. Kim Knits, P E T T I S K N I, wait, P, let me start over, P E T T I S K I M K N I T S. You can find me on, um, what is it, on Instagram as Kim the Crafty Nomad. I have an Etsy shop that's kind of uh, not all that functional right now, um, but it is called Ebony. Pearl Crochet Creations, I think, by Kim or something like that. <laughs> it does have a subtitle, but it's called Ebony Pearl. I will link it down below, E-B-O-N-I-E-P-E-A-R-L. And if you have been with me a long, long time, you already know where I got that name from. Anyway, uh, let's see, where else can you find me? I think that's every place. Oh, we have a Facebook group for this podcast, which I will also link down below. So you can come on over there and join us and hang out with us for all of the shenanigans. So let's get started. So today I have lots of things to share. I got some finishes. I have finishes in the knitting, crochet, sewing, and other DIY, DIY arena. And uh, then I have some whips, and I have, uh, what else, got a couple of acquisitions, which I think I'm going to end up pausing for the acquisition part because one of the things that I want to show you is out of reach. So, excuse me, let's get started with my finished object. So the first thing, actually I have two, well... Nope, that's a whip. So, 
first thing is I did make a second hat, not hate hat. It feels too small, but uh, I think, you know, maybe there's some petite child that will be able to fit it. It is knitted. We, I have used the um, Lion Brand, what is it? Lion Brand Heartland in the colorway Glacier Bay. And also, my other hat, not hate hat, is in the same yarn, and it is crochet. So, that's my next one. So, I think, you know, hopefully, they can find a kid. Because everybody's saying, still send it. It just seems very small to me. But, I'm going to send it. They can find a kid. Maybe there's some little petite kid who could use this. There's a kid out there for this hat. So, I'm going to send it anyway. All right. Whoa. Wow. Sorry. <laughs> I may or may not edit out the last bloop blip. All right. Second uh, finish. I am going to pop some pictures up uh, somewhere in this video so you can see me with this on. Uh, but, and I've already shared this all over the place, but yep. My crystal and bag old day crochet uh, poncho is done. Uh, this is the Easy Autumn Poncho, and I um, I made this using ice yarns and the, the, the rainbow ice yarns. And I used four complete, for the most part, uh, skeins um, on that. So, turned out great. This is going to be a really fun uh thing to wear during the fall and winter probably mostly winter because i live in southern california so fall is not that cold but yeah very excited and i will definitely pop pictures in so you can see what it looks like on all right so that's the second finish as far as knitting and crochet those are my finishes now uh, I do have some sewing finishes that I want to share with you guys. And again, if you follow me on Insta uh, and or if you're in the Facebook groups, you have already seen these. But uh, Laurel over at the Dabbling Hook, as well as um, Mars from the Hey Brownberry, uh, from the is it Brownberry Chronicles podcast. Anyway, she's Hey Brownberry over on Instagram. They, in the last couple weeks, got into making scrappy things with their scraps. Rel was making these really cute scrappy bags, and I decided to try my hand at them. So, the first one I made is this one. So, it is, I put a ball of yarn in here just to hold it, I guess, but look at that it's such a cute little bag and i love it people are asking me about selling these but honestly i probably won't because uh they're wonky ish and they have all my memories in them so i can see you know bags that i've made like i made fa many made and sold many bags with this fabric um uh, these denim, this denim is uh, my son, a pair of jeans. I don't know if you guys um, have boys or have had boys, but mine for the first, I don't know how many, he's 11 and he may not, he may still be doing it, but every pair of his pants end up with one hole in one leg. And so <laughs> one time I cut some off, I was like, oh, we just make them in the shorts. And he has the nerve to not want to wear them. So I took the cutoff leg and I saved some of the fabric. So it landed in this bag right here and right here. So if you can see my sewing machine, let's see if I can point to right here. That's my sewing machine. It is a ever sewn Sparrow 25. And, um, it has an alphabet on it. And when I made this one, I didn't understand how to write the words and stop it from continuing. So I don't know if you could even see, but the words love going across the words, peace going across and the words kindness going across. And then as I give you that close up, you can also see that I just stitched a bunch of specialty stitches all over it to make it kind of look like a crazy quilt. And I just love it because again, this right here is from a bag I made for Pam uh, from uh, uh, Pamela's Knit and Crochet Corner. 
these, this I use to make um, a part of the uh, uh, swap that I did over at Tea Dottles and just all these different things that just are reminders of bags that I made and you can't barely see it but there's a little bit of the curvy girl fabric right there so oh and this is the bag I made for Christy so there's just a lot of memories in here and um it's just lined in the orange and I always use uh girl gang ribbon for my uh drawstring so I just love it so uh, I like, I won't sell these. These are my memories, so I'm keeping it. Then I tried again. And this one I was like trying to attempt to make a zipper pouch with it. Sorry. I was trying to make a, a zipper pouch with it. <laughs> and it, it came out really long and skinny and I didn't like that. So now I just made it like I cut it off and redid it. But it's not boxed. It's just a little pouch. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. But again, lots of memories. Look at, there's the Curvy Girl fabric. I, I think somebody got this from me, won this bag from me in a giveaway. Uh, I've sold bags with all of these patterns. And so it's just fun. And here that fabric shows up again, that knitting fabric. And so it's just super fun. And I just have had a good time. So if you bought a bag from me, you might see your fabric here. You might see your fabric here. Um, and then on this one, I stitched the word. I figured out how to stop it. And I stitched the word love, peace, and joy on that one. So that was super fun. And I didn't want to make a whole handle, but I did want to put a beaded tassel on. So I did. I made that beaded tassel. And that little owl bead is like a little bell. So that's super fun. So there you go. That's it. And then I did one more. I still, I kept saying I was going to stop, but I still wanted to do one more. And though I haven't made any since I made this one, I still think I got a couple more bags in me or a couple more somethings with those scraps. And this is the last one that I finished. Also a drawstring. It does have a box bottom. And again, if you see this and you bought a bag from me, you may see some of the fabric from your bag in here. But all of this is from bags that I've made. And this again, my son's jeans showed back up. And this time, I put the words shine brightly on the bottom. Now, the way I made it, you can kind of see it still. The brightly ends up being toward the bottom once I boxed it. But yeah, it's super cute. This is like a sock size bag. And you can see all the specialty stitches that I did. So when I did mine, I did them slightly different uh, from the way uh, Rail did hers. Um, I did, I can't remember which ones I did how, but for some of these, I just paper pieced. And I just took a, some, uh, I took some, what is it? Uh, copy paper, printer paper. And I just started sewing pieces down onto that paper. And then in the end, I cut it into this uh, even square. And then I ripped all the paper off the back. So that's some of them were done like that. And then there's one of them where I actually did use a uh, fusible interfacing um, instead of paper to as the foundation. So I still did foundation piecing. So in other words, I didn't just lay them on there and iron them down. I actually sewed them, flipped them, ironed, flipped, you know, I did like that. And therefore, in the end, when I did iron it out, I just fused the interfacing to it at the end. But it had already been sewed. So I did it those couple different ways. Um, and I have some acquisitions that I'm going to share, which will make you know that I'm for sure continuing on with the scrappy stuff. So these were, these were a blast to make. I, I enjoy them. So there you go. Those are finished sewing. Now I have been doing a little bit of a DIY with the bath and body, uh, uh, area. So let me show you. I have made last night. I just did these ones last night. I've showed you the lotion, lotion bars on another video. 
I don't think I showed my lotion bars any on on one of these episodes, but I did put up a short uh, on the channel, and I will link it down below if you want to see the lotion bars I had made previously. Um, and I, oh wait, I still have a couple crochet finishes. So one would be let me take these off. These earrings, I made those. And one of the uh, group members had put up a, oh, what is that guy's name? Mark Montano. She put up one of his videos where he did a, a crochet beaded necklace. And I've done those before, but when I saw hers, I was inspired to try and make uh, earrings with it. And so I did. Let me see if I can take one of them off. And... There you go. So, I actually, this, these are two, they're not the, <laughs> I wasn't really precise on these. It was like a first shot. No, no actual pattern or anything. So, uh, one is bigger than the other. I'm saying all that to say one is definitely bigger than the other, but I don't know how much you can tell that when they're on my ear. So, I'm just wearing them. So, let me put this back on. <sighs> So, you know, when you, uh, sorry, sorry, if the, this is making a lot of noise as I rub up against the mic. I do apologize. Sorry. I'm trying to find my, trying to find my pierce, piercing. Uh oh, I can't find it. Okay. There it goes. Um, when you get going on one thing, you just want to keep on making things in the same vein. And so I made some more crochet earrings. Because honestly, I just end up losing them around the house and I'm like, ooh, I need to update my my earring wardrobe. So I bead some too without any crochet, but I want to make these. And so I made this pair with the cute little elephants and I just think these, this will be fun even with the top I have on now, especially if I just had a black scarf or if I was just, uh, I had some big hair it would still be cute so those are super cute okay I think that's my all my crochet finishes so back to the bath and body DIYs uh, I last night I gave a shot to making uh, some lotion bars which uh, actually these ones this is a balm and this is a balm. I found a recipe for allergy relief. I use a bunch of essential oils, um, beeswax, coconut oil, and shea butter, I believe, is in this one. So I made these for my son, and I'm actually going to share one with my niece because she has really bad allergies. And you put in, like, lemon essential oil. You put in lavender essential oil. You put in frankincense essential oil, and then there's one more essential oil. I'll find the recipe that I use and link it down below. I found it on Pinterest, uh, but these are the lotion bars, and they're in these little mini deodorant things, and you can see if I pull it up like that, it just pushes right up and out, and you can use it like that, and it'll go right back down. So, yeah, we used it on him last night. And, uh, well, it seems like it helped a little bit, but we will see. We'll keep using it and we'll keep you updated. So I made four of those. I'm going to keep, uh, he's using one. I'm going to get send one to my niece and then we'll keep the other two for in the future. And then I also just made, uh, two, uh, or I made three lotion bar, um, sticks with, uh, avocado oil coconut oil, I think shea butter, and then I had a fragrance oil that's called pure honey that I put in this one, and, um, and, and I used a mix of beeswax and soy wax, because I tried to just use the soy, and for some reason it would not harden, which I didn't have a problem with last time, but, um, uh, this one, I had to go back, put it back together, put some um, more beeswax in it so it could solidify. So this one is actually not as, 
the the oils are not melting off as easily as the the hand the ones that I made before so I gotta tweak the recipe and figure that all out but these ones I'll be giving away oh and I ended up making one lip balm as well so those I'll just uh, gift to people maybe you <laughs> I'm still perfecting that. Uh, but anyway, I used the new one on my elbows. And, I mean, they are imperfect elbows, but they actually look pretty good, you know. Because, <laughs> uh, you know, elbows can be rough. But using those really helps. Anyway, so those are all my finishes. Now, let me show you, without knocking everything around. From one ball of yarn, this is what I have left. I made two hats for hat not eight, and this is what I have left. Now, I am going to show you my whips. And the first whip I'm going to show you, I'm not going to show you right here. I'm just going to cut away to a video so you can see what I made. But it is the granny rectangle um, afghan which I made with the Yarn B Sugar Wheel. And it's the colorway Lemon Strudel, if you can see that. And I used four of these. And out of the four of these, I made 24 granny rectangles. Then I sewed them together. Using... Um, I'm using, uh, what is it? Mm. I love this yarn in the colorway yellow. And uh, when I show you the picture, you will see. But I use, sorry, I'm bending down. Oh, I hope I don't fall. Okay. I use the, the colorway yellow to border each square. Then to seam all the squares together, and then I have gone around with one, um, I've gone around and bordered with this. So it could be counted as finished when you see it. However, I want to make it a little bit bigger, but this is all I have left of that yellow yarn. And so I ordered some more. Yes, I did. It's not here yet. So I'm going to cut away right here so you guys can see um that whip all right guys so here is the blanket i'm just talking because the audio did not record very well but that's the entire blanket you can see it um that is four uh yarn be sugar wheels and i'm bringing it closer now just to show you guys the border so um I joined it and seamed it with that yellow. I love this yarn. And I also added uh, two borders. I went around with single crochet first. And then a granny uh, border after that. So, yeah. It's all done. I think I'm going to show you the back so you can see that I have woven in all of the ends here. I just have the border yarn ends to snip and to um, go ahead and cut off. And yeah, I'm just going to go around a little bit more and then I will call it finished. So, yep, very excited to have that done. So, yep. See you in a minute. Okay, so now let's move on to the next web. Um, so, you know, I was forgot what I was looking for when I came upon this old project that has just been languishing. It is a knitting project and it is a Linus shawl, which I showed in another short when I did kind of a day in a life. Uh, of a work at home crafter video a week or so ago. And this is, it's Deborah Norville uh, Serenity Sock um, yarn that I'm sure I got from Michaels. And this has been sitting since I think 2015, <laughs> something like that. A lot of the old projects that I'm finding are from along before I really got more into my crochet. Uh, but 
uh, or actually probably before I found all of you guys, because as soon as I started crocheting, I was more into it. But everybody who in, in the yarny world at that time, they were all cro knitting. So I was still doing a lot of knitting, which I like knitting, especially stuff like this potato chippy stuff. Uh, it's nothing but garter stitch. And you're just increasing on one time on one side. It's going to be a boomerang style show. And it's going to be a pretty pop of color uh, when it comes to the fall. So I'm all tangled up, yo. I got it all tangled up in my with these earbuds. Dang it. Okay, let's see if I can do this without cutting the video. Yeah, I can. Okay. So. This one is living in my Silver Shed USA bag. One of the first bags I bought before I started making them. <laughs> and, uh, yep. All right. Next is, I will go with this one. Now, you guys, I started making these, and I never put them up for sale, but I did make several of these fabric yarn bowls. And they hold a cake really, really well. And um, I was using this, I think, to hold the yarn that I was using, the cakes, the yarn bee cakes that I was using for my afghan. Well, I had some left over. And I decided to make a coordinating throw pillow. Now, this has this got all kind of problems. Now, I'm going to show you what this is supposed to look like when I get done. So, and I'm doing this because Ella from No Catchy Name is doing, um, she's hosting, guest hosting, a happy scrappy yarn challenge. I don't think that's what it's called, but I will link it down below. But there's another uh, podcaster who is having monthly stash buster uh, challenges and every once in a while she asks another podcaster to host for the month so Ella from No Catchy Name is hosting for this month and the challenge is to use up your stash not not just your yarn stash but your pattern stash so to make a pattern from a book in or 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 patterns you already have so I got this book called The Modern Granny Square and I decided to take a stab at this pillow here. You see that? Yeah, you can see it. So, it is called the let's see, Bobble Stitch Pillow. Now, this goes really fast. I just, I'm not sure exactly what I've done wrong. But look at how, look at mine. It's all puckery. This is supposed to be 14 inches. And this is done. This is all the rounds. It's 13 rounds. It's done. But look at it. It's like a hat in the middle. Look, I, I have no idea what I've done wrong. So what I'm hoping is that when I get the pillow form, that I can stretch it out over and this will flatten. But if y'all think this is never going to flatten, let me know. I'll just rip it back out and try again. Maybe I should have used a bigger hook I used the hook it called for which I think was a G I mean no an H I used my trusty clover H and um it's weird look at it see see now you can see you can see the problem right there right there <laughs> so I'm not sure what I gotta do and I didn't measure this to see where we stand if it's literally 14 inches or not but I may be ripping that back and doing it again because uh, I had to rip it back several times while I was doing it because I was reading the pattern wrong. And I still finished it in a day. So I did this on Sunday, just the front. So when I get the yellow yarn from, uh, to continue the border, I'm also going to use that yellow yarn for the backing of this. So I can have a coordinating pillow and then uh, we will decide if I'm going to gift it because really when I make things like that, I never want to give it away. It's so pretty and I put so much work into it, but you only need so much of this stuff, right? So anyway, that's a whip. Then uh, you guys know that Chris and I on our show, we, 
We are uh, Hook and Stitch Live with Kim and Chris and keep on the lookout because a new episode of that is coming up soon. Um, but we are doing host co-hosting a, um, a crochet along and it's called the What Time Is Lit Cal. And um, don't mind my pattern, stuff got spilled on it, but this is the Lost in Time pattern by Joanna Lindahl. And it is a free pattern. And what's so incredible about this pattern is that some of you guys, uh, okay, so we are co-hosting. And the updates and all of the talk about it will be on my channel when we uh, host our Hook and Stitch Live with Kim and Chris. However, all of the giveaways and posting of your pictures, that's happening on Chris's Facebook page, which I will also link down below. Some people already finished. I am so not. I'm still at the same place. I'm not sure where I was last time I talked to you guys, but I haven't made very much progress at all. I am keeping it in my polka dotty bag that I made for myself. Polka dots on the inside, polka dots on the outside. And just like a little drawstring bag. These are so cute. These are fun to make. This was a, one of the first ones I learned how to make. So you can see I got, that's why I got some issues it was one of my earlier ones. <laughs> anyway, I am using Joy DK from Loops and Threads in the colorway Wild Berry. Because I don't want to weave in ends. I am using my uh, Furls Hook in AG. I don't know why it says G+. Plus. <gasps> you know why? Because it's one of those 4.5. Is 4.5 that elusive one? The four and a half? I don't know. Anyway, I don't know why it's G+. Plus, but I'm using my furls. And guys, I haven't done a thing. Seriously, I need to get on it. I just need head space for this. So here's where I'm at. I think I'll, this is row, I have the beginning of row 13, I think. <laughs> People have finished. I'm on row 13. Okay, I need to get it together. Anyway, the crochet along it started on April 1st. It will go all the way through June 1st. So you have plenty of time to jump in. I tell, I told you people have finished. There are people starting a second one. So you can still jump in on this crochet along. Please do. Okay. The pattern is free. You can be like Chris and change colors every, pa every row. You'll be like me and some other people who are using cake yarns so that the color will just naturally change. Um, but yeah, super duper, super duper fun. Um, one detail about our show is that uh, when we share things, we have uh, regular segments where we show different things. And so, for example, we have one called Finishing Stitches, which is where we show our um, finished objects. We have something called Hooks in Progress, where we show our whips. Oh, yeah, that's how it goes. So thing is we like for you guys to participate in that so we pop people onto the show with us so that they can show us what they're working on what their finishing stitches are and there's another really cool segment and I'm going to get it wrong Chris I'm sorry but it's called uh, I don't know what it's called it's something like hooks anyway I'm so sorry I got to get it together but it's a segment where Chris has and I both showed some old finished pro projects. And so if you have some things that you made when you were a little girl, maybe you want to be a part of our show. So be thinking about that. Also, if you don't want to necessarily be on camera, you can messenger us a picture, specifically messenger me a picture, and we will showcase certain pictures, certain pictures. At times, we will showcase other people's pictures and pop them up on the screen so everybody can see some of their works. So anyway, that's just a public service announcement for you guys. All right, that's it for that. Next. In another bag that I made, um, is my sweater. Okay, so this is my knitted sweater. It is called, let me see, let me get the pattern out. It's another free pattern. 
<clears throat> it is called the Lady Kina. And I think the reason why it's called the Lady Kina is because they have the same pattern for little kids. This one is free. I think the, the little kid Kina one is, the Kina is also free. But if you could see that, that's the pattern. I am using Lion Brand um, Heartland in the colorway Glacier Bay. Same as the hats. And let's see if I can get this up here and show you in a decent way. So you can halfway see that it is a sweater. So, that's where I'm at with my sweater. Oh, I think I'm going to work on this tonight. At this point, I have separated for the sleeves, as you can see. I think I had, anyway, the last time I showed you guys this. Uh, but I'm just continuing down the body. And let's see if we can show you on the back. Maybe you can see. It's curling up a little bit, but it's coming along. So, uh, <laughs> that's my progress keeper. So, that's how much progress, about an inch <laughs> that I have made. But it's coming along, and I'm excited about it. Uh, I'm excited to get it finished so that um, I can wear it in the fall. And I tried it on. It fits. I need to lose some weight. Um, so it'll fit even better once I do that, <laughs> but it fits. All right. So that's Lady Kina. All right. Let's see. Let's keep that right here. The next thing. Another bag I made with a little sheep. This is before I started doing the straps with the hardware and I used the uh, chalk fabric chalkboard fabric and I have written what this is you can see it it is the just feel festive shawl that I started on April 17th using ice yarn which is the rainbow uh, ice yarn I'm using a H hook in fact the same H hook that I already showed you I'm also using in here and can you see the fogging up of the glasses. All right. Anyway, these colors are the, ooh, the purples so far, but I am going to use a different one to finish this up. Um, but here's where I'm at in my, on my, um, Lost in, lost in time. Mine just feel festive. And I love how this ice yarn is coming out. Um, who did I see? Uh, Jackie from Hooking and Good Company. She did a beautiful one in the ice yarns. And I was like, ew, I have lots of this rainbow yarn. So I am going to start one in that. So this will be my second Lost in Time. And then I think the last whip that I'm going to show you is something that I forgot who is a fairly new podcaster and she was, she's doing, a, she had made a summer hat and I found the, the tutorial, which was from, I forgot who, but I'll find it and link it down below. Everything is being housed in this little ladybug bag. Hi, Pam. Look at that ladybug. <laughs> and this one is was an experiment. I was trying to make a bag where you see how there is no line, no seam. Just the seams here and here. And it worked out beautifully. But you can only do this when you don't, when you have a, when you're using a pattern with non-directional pattern <laughs> so I don't usually end up making mine like that so in here it's a sun hat and it's made with uh, cotton yarn I am using the premier home cotton which is 85% cotton and 15% uh, polyester so I'm holding so I'm using this colorway which is Delft blue which I don't think that's Delft Blue, actually. And I'm holding it together with the Lily Sugar and Cream 
I don't know what that colorway is, but I'm holding it together with that. And I'm using a stitch marker that came from my stitch marker swap or uh, carousel package that I did last year. It was so much fun. Got to get another one going at some point. Um, but yeah, I am making a sun hat and it's like really, really stiff, but that's good. I'm just hoping it'll fit my big old head, but it just looks so cute on her. I don't know. I'm probably fooling myself to think it's going to look good on my head, but if it doesn't, I'll give it to my mom. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's where I'm at on that. All right. So that's it for my projects. Now, let me show you some of my things that I have gotten over the last couple of days. I'll be right back. Hold on. Okay, so I finally got an Ella bag. So I was able to snag one of Ella's bags. You know, some people, you even though you make bags, you just kind of want to have other people's bags too. And I don't buy a lot of bags, but I just really wanted to have a no catchy name bag. So I got this one from Ella. And it's beautifully lined. And it's a beautiful size. And then you can see her um, her tag. And I love it. I thoroughly I'm going to use it and really enjoy it. So, yep. It's such a beautiful size for like a big amigurumi or something like that. That's probably what I'm going to use it for. In fact, I think I'm going to put my Snorlax in here because that's one of my goals for the month is to finish my Snorlax. Okay. So, that's one thing I got. Second thing I got was... Uh, I got this from a seller on Etsy. I'll link Ella's shop below. But this lady is called Lulu Berry Charms. And uh, she lost her, she's run out of her car, so she just wrote it down on something. So I won't even show her car. I will link her shop down below. But I bought uh, a little uh, shaker charm. Let me see if I can bring that up and show you. Um, from her it's like a resin shaker I don't know if you could see it moving around but I bought that one a while ago and then I noticed that she was having some of her little dry shakers on sale so I bought a couple more to decorate some of my bags so let me see okay so the first one and I got it for a little less because it's a dry shaker and she was having a clearance. So I got this one that I hung on this bag. It's a little mason jar. So cute. And I just wanted to bling up my bags, guys. And she had these on sale. She still has a couple more on sale. Um, and then I got this little kitty. So you can see that. It's like a ghosty kitty or something like that. But it's super cute. And then I got this one. Which is on my little Notions. My Grinch Notions pouch. And let me see if I can get that one up. So you can see it. And that one's right there. So just a little bit of bling for my bag. Now, I was making earrings and I wanted some more color. So I found this on Amazon. This is just some DNC size eight um, cotton embroidery thread, but I will use these to make earrings. And I just got a variety pack of colors for that. Then, um, I got this, uh, just a variety pack of different size jump rings. So it comes in a thing like this, like a, it's like a little pill box, but then on the inside of each one is a different size jump ring, which I got off of Amazon. And then in one of these compartments, it actually has little lobster clasps so that was cool but most of it is just different size jump rings so I got that 
Then, because I was making the scrappy bags, I wanted to get a crazy quilt ruler to make the center. So I got this from Annie's. And this is an easy quilting ruler. Got that. And then in that same order, I got some little snips that are super cute. I got two different colors and one of them will land in the giveaway at some point. But this is how they work. You see that the little top stays connected. And you just pull the top off when you're ready to use it. You pull the top off when you're ready to use your snips and then you put it, it stretches and you put it back on. And yeah, super cute. So I think those are all my acquisitions, but I did get one more fun thing that I never ever get happy mail guys because I don't have a P.O. box. Because P.O. boxes in California are expensive. <laughs> and uh, there was a point where I had like uh, a gift card that I had gotten for Christmas. And I was trying to use it to make get myself a uh, P.O. box and it would not take the payment because it was a gift card. It was a Visa gift card, but it wouldn't take it. So I still don't have one. But look what I got. I got happy mail from Santa all the way from Alaska. So I got one of her cards. Santa's place has a nice little personal message on the back and a scripture and some pure peppermint tea. If it wasn't so hot, I'd drink this tonight. I am considering drinking some chamomile tea just because I need to chill, guys, because it's been a little bit stressful, but I'm not going into it. Um, just, uh, well, I'll say generally just with, um, you know, I work in the healthcare industry. I am an administrative assistant, but I do work in healthcare. And um, because we did not get the surge that everybody was preparing for, um, we, um, and I believe that's because we did the social distancing thing, uh, because, um, a lot of reasons. Um, I think, you know, whatever COVID-19 thing we have going on here is very different from what's happening in New York, but we've been preparing in case we got there, Well, we haven't had the surge. And so now all the hospitals, specifically the one I work at, we are ramping back up and adding surgeries back on to the schedule and people are coming back to work and it's just a little bit stressful um, because it's not as if the virus is gone. It's not as if they have a uh, vaccine yet. So uh, I think that, yeah, people are going stir crazy. They're ready to get back. Everybody's afraid about the economy and I get all of that. Um, but I also get that there's a virus that's actually real and it's still happening. And so. I'm just a little bit stressed out about how I'm going to re-enter the workplace in a safe way. So I was going to drink me some chamomile tea and just chill, but it's kind of hot. So I don't know if I'm going to do it. Anyway, we have a Zoom call tonight, a regularly scheduled uh, Zoom call with our small group at church. Uh, so I wanted to take this time to make my video and get it back out there. It's going to be a long one, and I'm sorry. But uh, guys, thank you so much for joining me and hanging out with me today. And I hope uh, that you guys are all well, that you guys are all safe. And, um, <clears throat> and I'm hoping that... This thing will be over with at some point. <laughs> anyway, um, that's it. That's all. I will see you guys in the next video. And until then, keep it crafty, guys. I'll see you. Hey, guys. Just a little bit of live footage. And that will really be the end. Bye. Bye.